Hello, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Doomed. Solo playthroughs through Arkham Horror, the card game with a focus on roleplay and storytelling. If you're here watching on the YouTube VOD, thank you. You can check down below for the place where the, the place, for the, <laughs> for the time code where the action's going to get going. But first, we have to chat with people who are here. Hello one, hello all. I see number of people in the chat. That's wonderful to see everybody. Thank you very much. Ellie Spot, Zen Robo, and Luke. Exhausted, feet hurting, but glad to come home. Well, I'm glad, Luke. I'm glad to hear that. I'm hoping that I am indeed something that is good to come home to. I feel... I feel... <laughs> not, not well said. Howdy, everybody. Um, I'm really excited tonight to be uh, playing some more Doomed. We are a fat... Oh, low! Hello. Is that Lo the Illustrator of the Incredible Artistic Talent and on the Disconcordia server? That's right. If you join our Discord over at RPG Clinic, you can find information about, jo <laughs> about joining Disconcordia, a persistent 24-7, changeling the dreaming, role-playing Discord server. Hang on. There was, there, there, was a, there was a better way to say that. Uh, hi, 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 and welcome all to Doomed. This is scenario seven of eight of The Circle Undone, starring Rita Young and Pete Sylvester. Uh, Reet? No, we went with Pita. Pita, obviously. Their love is blossoming uh, beneath the horrors of the multiverse. Uh, <laughs> um, depending on the campaign in Arkham Horror, the card game, sometimes your game can end real early. Uh, scenario four or so, a pain in the ass. Pita! Yeah, it sounds about right, actually. <laughs> about right, Zen. I tend to agree. Um, what do I want to say about that? Yeah, uh, normally, well, depending on the campaign, you your, your campaign might end around Scenario 4, but then you have the chance to pick it up again with new investigators. Maybe Scenario 6. So far, we've survived. Um, hasn't been great. We've had a couple not-so-good scenarios back-to-back -back with one great one and then another not-so-good one, but... Rita's a survivor, literally and figuratively. That's what she's going to do. She and Pete are going to survive. If nothing else, they're going to try to stop the crazed people who are attempting to unleash some sort of evil spirits upon Arkham. And if they can't, well, they're going to survive. That's the key. As always, let me know if sound and such are good. I'm going to make sure that there's music going in the background here. Uh, it's hard to sort of auto mix it, so hopefully it's not too, too loud, and I'll keep an eye on it as well. But what, what else do I want to say? I'm really excited to be back for tonight. Tonight? Excellent. Thanks, Kate. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Kate, we appreciate Tonight's scenario, In the Clutches of Chaos, is uh, modeled after Pandemic, the Matt Leacock board game uh, <laughs> where you combat a global pandemic. <laughs> um, but what I mean is mechanically. Uh, we'll see it momentarily, but the mechanic bears a striking resemblance to the primary mechanic in Pandemic, where you place um, outbreak or where you pr place um, anyway little cubes to represent disease, and then outbreak, and so on and so forth. Oh, hello, Rocky. So, yeah, we're gonna see a bit of that today. There's gonna be a lot of like random location placing, and you know we'll figure out why that's happening the way that it is. Uh, but I'm pretty jazzed, because I seem to recall this one being pretty fun in terms of a knife edge of, like, can you win, can you not win. I'm hoping I don't get steamrolled just, like, all at once. That would be a bit disappointing, but we're going to get into it. Enough chit-chat. Let's get doomed. Hey, here we are. Uh, welcome back to the fold. It's Rita. Ooh, there she is. There's our track star. What a, what a winner. Uh, I'm sure I could have done this better. All right. We'll, of course, read our scenario intro. We'll do a little bit of setup. We'll read our agenda and our act. We'll get right into it. I'm really jazzed for today. All I need is... <laughs> oh, God. Damn it. There you go, Lo. There's a friggin' tentacle for you. God damn it. I'm guaranteed to draw at least one. The last scenario, Union and Disillusion, saw Rita and Pete go to the Misty Isle or the Uninhabited Isle or some ridiculous name for an island in the middle of uh, Arkham's Miskatonic River. Um, 
where they attempted to stop the, uh, oh my god, the Silver Twilight Lodge's um, spell, I don't know, thing, ritual from going. Oh, Paximo, hi. I was wondering, Paximo, I was like, Alan, Alan. Yes, I, you know what? I feel that. I feel that too. Uh, so last time on on Doomed, yeah, Rita and Pete went to an island in the middle of Miskatonic River to try to disrupt the Silver Twilight Lodge's uh, ritual to summon forth or bind the Watcher. Um, we're not quite sure what happened. Rita had to fight off a lot of different things and people, and was able to make it back to the boat and roll out to the to the middle of the water. Came back and watched a bunch of the Silver Twilight Lodge being killed by Annette Mason's Witch's Coven. Twist. Annette Mason is now possessed by evil. Spirit of Kaziah Mason. No, Annette Mason, Kaziah, doesn't matter. The Spirit of Kaziah, <laughs> who is who is uh, an old-timey witch that we faced off against already. So what we know now is that Annette Mason is possessed by evil. Not so good. In terms of what's changed between this scenario and this one, uh, last scenario and this one, I've removed the puzzle box from my deck. I had two experience to spend. I spent it. And I also um, uh, changed my random uh, my basic weakness. The Dark Pact was not fulfilled, so I've replaced it with The Price of Failure. If we see that in this game, you'll understand why it's called The Price of Failure. Scenario 7, In the Clutches of Chaos. After what you saw at the, uninvi the Uninvited Isle, I'm sorry, the Unvisited Isle. I can't read either. Oh, this is going to make for a great stream, folks. Uh, <laughs> your, your faith in humanity is on thin ice. You feel like a wayward spirit wandering the streets with no destination in mind. You wish you could just return home and forget everything that's happened in the last few weeks, but you know that's just a pipe dream. After hours of aimless meandering with... Pete Sylvester, no doubt, you know, maybe they're hand in hand, they're just kind of like, they're clammy hands touching, you know. Um, a oh, Crosshair, you're here! Don't worry, Crosshair, I was just catching people up on last week, we're just starting now. After hours of aimless meandering, you snap back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity. When you realize you have wandered into Independence Square. A soft breeze carries a trail of brittle leaves across the grass of the clearing, drawing your eyes upward. There? Upward? Like in the sky? Drawing your eyes upward. Okay. There, sitting amidst a circle of autumn-colored leaves, sits Anna Caslow. That's the tarot reader from the beginning of the book. Story. Her eyes are closed in a deep trance, her fingers pressed against the temples of her head. Laid out on the grass in front of her is a wool blanket, and on top of that... A circle of overlapping face-down tarot cards. You approach and take a seat in front of the fortune teller. It's only now that you realize just how sore and tired you are. Every one of your muscles aches with pain, and it takes a significant amount of effort for you to not immediately pass out. If the investigators are never seen or heard from again. Well, that's not us. So we're going to skip to intro three. I just want to point out how all of this started. Seriously, uh, Ellie Spot, please let Crosshair know. I can only imagine Crosshair desperately wants that uh, emote. Um, I can only, like, all of this started because Rita was, sort of found herself getting a tarot reading from Anna Caslow and chose to reject her fate, right? It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. And then all of this has come crashing down around her. Oh, the shady bunny. Crosshair, is that your Twitch channel? <laughs> Uh, now after, so, oh, hello, Ranty. Awesome to see ya. Oh, Hearthstone, too. Perfecto. Welcome, welcome to Doomed. Um, after so many incidents of her and Pete, like, finding themselves in situations, like, way, in way over their head. Like, the only one that they, re there were a couple that they really managed to tackle well, and that was sneaking around a mansion filled with old white dudes um, who are none too fast. But they did okay there. But everything else has just been horrible. I think Rita's found herself back here now, and she's like, how does this person know where I am? What's happening? 
but we think perhaps that there is indeed some sort of link between Rita's destiny and Taro. Oh, shh. Oh my god. Crosshair. I don't know how to say this, but you have, you, you must. Look at this. They've got a, oh my god. <laughs> They've got a friggin' Binding of Isaac Bunny emote. Look at this. These are amazing. Oh my god. Incredible. Intro 3. Anna opens her eyes. I was wondering when we would meet again. You wonder aloud how she could possibly not know when everything else she has predicted has come to pass. Your remark earns you a hearty chuckle from the soothsayer. <laughs> that doesn't mean I know everything, my dear. She runs her fingers across the circle of cards. I suspect the past few weeks have been quite arduous for you. Are you here for more guidance? You grimace. This all began with a reading of your fortune. What makes you think another reading will make this all go away? Guten Abend. Intro four. Before you can answer, God damn it, Anna turns over the card closest to her. It depicts a furtive, hooded figure. Hoods! The hooded figures that have been after her this whole goddamn time. It depicts... It's a great question, Rocky, honestly. It depicts a furtive, hooded figure with, the f with five swords embedded in the ground around it. Others cower and flee before the victorious figure, and a maelstrom of dark clouds brew over its head. Above this image, the card reads... Five of Swords. You may feel as though you have been defeated, but you must not give in to despair. The battle may be over, but your struggle has not yet ended. Misery catches in your throat. You want nothing more than for this nightmare to be over, but Anna's words ring true. You know it will not end unless you put an end to it yourself. A flash of light. God, yes, Rita. Fuck yeah. That's a good takeaway here. Overpowering forces of darkness, gotta fight back. Boom. A flash of light burns across the sky, followed swiftly by a resounding crack of thunder. The clouds above are not natural. Phantasmal shapes shift and churn within the mist above. If you listen closely, you can faintly hear their howls of pain and sadness drifting on the wind. It has begun, Anna utters quietly. You rise to your feet, ignoring your exhaustion, your pain, and your fear. Welcome to In the Clutches of Chaos. This is scenario seven of the Circle Undone. As I was saying before, some people arrived. I'll just reiterate. This scenario has a mechanic that is very much like Pandemic by La Ma uh, Matt Leacock board game. We'll be seeing that shortly, um, where we're going to be placing, um, well, breaches, which will then potentially outbreak or whatever the term is in this game, which we're very excited about. So we'll take a look. Uh, in terms of setup, yep, yeah, good. Stack your towers. Stack your towers, folks. So we are shuffling up various locations. There's different versions of the locations. This is our map. We start in south side, which is in the middle. Whoops. We're just gonna shuffle up the various locations and then put all of the ones that we're not using in a big old pile. Good. Um, Check the campaign log. If Annette Mason is... Oh, my Life is Strange game is a... Oh, yay, Luke! Yeah, jump back in there. I hope you enjoy. I'm, I'm hoping it's a good one. Uh, there we go. It's good, Ellie Spot. If Annette Mason is possessed by evil, do all the following things. Now, thankfully, um... This is, the, you know, Tabletop Simulator makes this very nice and easy for me. I don't have to go hunt for various things. Annette Mason is possessed by evil. We just place. Like that. Is that, is that a bit better? It is very chaotic, isn't it? Um, it's also placed two additional locations. Hangman's Hill, where it all ends. And the Silver Twilight Lodge, shrouded in mystery. Now, I've made this mistake before. I need the other copies of those uh, locations so that I can add them to my pile of random locations. This is um, up here, top left. This is a pile of random locations. Ah, the Silver Privilege Lodge. Ah, yes, Dr Drew Village. Nancy Drew Village. Drew Privilege. You'll probably see me a whole bunch of times, folks, randomly shuffling this pile. I'm gonna hit it a bunch of times, and where it stops, nobody knows where it stops is the location that's chosen. Um, 
it's just a tick. It's not a, I'm not, I'm not re-rolling. Like I'm not pressing it once and going, oh, I don't like that. You know, I'm going to probably hit it three or four times every time. It's still random, so it's fine. Let's continue. What else do I need to do here? Check the campaign log. I haven't done that. <laughs> Set the Piper of Azathoth enemy out of, uh, aside out of play. Flip it, shuffle, and flip. Now, the only problem with that crosshair, I think, is if I flip... Oh, no. Ooh, some of the locations have clues, so it'll place clues in the pile, which I don't love. But that is a good point, actually. Hmm. <laughs> Dang it, Luke. Duh, you'll have to play twice now. Ah, shoot. <laughs> All right. Choose two different random locations. Place a breach on each of these locations. And then we'll talk about what breaches are, but I'm going to I'm going to do that. So, ready? Shuffle. Silver Twilight Lodge, a classic, and Rivertown. Now, I, I happen to know where these are, uh, you know, after after uh, seeing this map a few times. As a toddy. As a toddy. Mm. Can I get a tot's a bit, please? Choosing a random location, shuffle everything together and draw one at random, fine. Breaches and incursions. Okay. In this scenario, doom does not accrue at the usual rate. Instead, breaches are placed on locations. When enough breach tokens have been placed on a single location, an incursion occurs, which adds doom and causes breaches to open in connecting locations. Our primary goal should therefore be to prevent incursions from happening by removing breaches. Ooh, probably crosshair. Placing breaches, it explains how to place them. Resolving incursions. So I'll just mention this in a moment. Check out that art. What's happening, Annette Mason is possessed by evil and has somehow opened the sky into some sort of spirit dimension. There are breaches to this other world that are accruing across the city uh, of Arkham. And uh, Rita, and hopefully Pete Sylvester, are going to try to close as many of them as they can. Um, they just explain a bit more here. Breaches are placed by the agenda. Yeah, exactly, Crosshair. That guy kind of looks like Brom. Rude. Um, when breaches are placed on multiple locations, they should be placed one at a time. Fine. Resolving incursions. Okay, so when when you have when you have three breaches on a location and you go when you go to place a fourth, again much like pandemic, instead, it's an incursion. An incursion removes all breaches, places a doom and places a breach on each connecting location, this can chain react. So instead of a doom every turn, instead, we only accrue doom if we have incursions. Can't, I can't fault you, Crosshair. We're having a blast here. It's good time. It's good times. So, yeah, just to reiterate, the only way to advance the agenda by doom is to resolve enough incursions. So if we can keep the breaches low or closed as best we can, then hopefully we never run out of time and we can just win the scenario at our own rate. Pace. That's the theory. It also means, as an example, let's say I place a, uh, let's say I have three breaches on south side and I go to place a fourth. Whoop, that's an incursion. A doom goes here and a breach goes on the merchant district, uptown, south church, French hill, and Rivertown, right? All the connecting locations. Fine. Let's say that French Hill also has three on it already. Boom, incursion, doom. Another one goes on Rivertown, and another one goes on Silver Twilight Lodge. Huh. I mean, Crosshair, that is an excellent point. So the game scales a little bit. Uh, when you place breaches from the agenda, you place one on a number of different random locations equal to the number of investigators plus one. So I'm placing two per turn. Two players would place three, etc. Which is, they have to be on different locations, which is an important point. I can't randomly draw the same location twice. So that's something. We'll have to see. Okay, actually, you know what? I was in the midst of reading the agenda anyway. Agenda 1A, The Chariot 7. The conquest has begun. All shall tremble before the host of chaos. Crosshair, submit or perish. When Doom would be placed on this agenda instead, place a breach on a number of different random locations equal to number of investigators plus one point. 
forced when a breach would be placed on a location with three instead incursion so that's that's we just talked about it but that's how the mechanic of the scenario is going to work seven doom threshold submit or perish is great act 1a dark knowledge the state of the city continues to decay this is some look at the art on this card this is metal af can i zoom in on that look at that metal Breaches in reality begin to rip through the fabric of the earth, and a faint melody of discordant pipes can be heard throughout the streets. Free trigger. Remove three breaches from this act to place a clue on a random location. Okay. Objective. When the investigators have collected three clues, we have to spend them in advance. How do I get clues? Well, I place... I remove breaches from the act to place a clue. How do I get breaches on the act? Each location has a different way of doing that. We're gonna close breaches. When we've closed enough, we get a clue. On a random location, we get the clues, we advance the act. I've done a lot of mechanical explaining. I feel like we gotta get into the storytelling of this. Rita, exhausted, in pain, hurt, despairing, standing back to back with Pete in the middle of Southside in Arkham. If you didn't know any better, you would think Southside was a ghost town. All of the residents have retreated into their homes and locked their doors. The only light you see seems to be coming from the Catholic Church to the south. To the south. Well, yeah, so so yes, Crosshair. Uh just to specify though, breaches on locations can trigger like doom and incursions and stuff. We'll see this in a second, but there's ways of moving the breaches from the location to the act, where they don't do anything bad. From there, they can be spent to get clues. So I want to spend the scenario running around closing fabrics in space and time and whatever, to and reality, to like get clues for myself. Oof. So... Yeah, exactly. Ugh, God, ridiculous, Luke. Ridiculous. Okay, I think it's time. Is it time? It's time. Let's get to it. Let's get doomed. I'm gonna draw my opening hand here. I don't like this opening hand. I don't like it at all. Let's get pandemic. I am doing a full mulligan. I didn't get Pete. I didn't get my tarot card from Anna Caslo. I didn't get my shoes. I need some of the Pete. Shoes. Come on. Oh, okay, okay. We almost got everything we wanted. That's pretty good. Let's have a look. Southside is a one shroud, zero clue location. It says, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck and move a breach from Southside to the act. Choose a power treachery discarded and resolve it, if able. Like I said, we've got Pete here. Um, I think we're just going to take the turn to like, yeah. Pete forever! Paximo, yes! Rita looks at Pete, looks up at the sky, sits down on a park bench, takes a moment. That's a resource. Slips on her track shoes. And Pete offers his hand to her, pulls her up. She looks at him and she's like, Bud, first turn is setup turn. This is known. <sighs> Pete, I don't know how we're going to get out of this, but I have something I want to tell you. And he's like, he goes to be like, shush, babe. You don't have to tell me anything. And then he's like, no, that's, that's douchey comportment. I'm not going to do that. He instead, he's like, yeah, Rita, what is it? She's like, I think I'm falling for you, Pete. He blushes a little bit and he looks down and away. Reaches out his hand and grabs hers. They squeeze each other's hands for a moment. And they look up at the sky where a big bolt of lightning has thundered down, landing somewhere in Rivertown to the east of where they are. She's like, come on. Let's go. Let's go deal with... The, let's, let's go finish off these witches. I don't know move to the upkeep phase where we draw a card and gain a resource oh my god it's pete sylvester's twin what 
Aww, I think they're being cute, Paximo. I ship it too. Paximo, you're the reason that PETA is even a thing in this game. I mean, no, I kind of I kind of saw them being like a bit of an item, but uh, but I am very pleased about it. Okay, in the mythos phase, normally we would place a doom on the agenda. Instead, I am placing two breaches, one on each of two different random locations. South Church. No, I can't pick South Church. And the Silver Twilight Lodge. See what happened there? I can't pick the same place twice. Church and the Lodge. So, okay, clearly I need to go deal with the Lodge. Nothing is wrong. Everything is, everyone is healthy. You're ready to go. All full of hope. Your butt is untouched for now. And then the whisper. Argon. Failure. Basically. See, Paximo, that's the kind of di- Damn it, Paximo, why didn't you write me some damn dialogue before <laughs> Let's go save the- Let's go save the world, Pete. Then we can talk about after. They're- They're now, like, wonderful film noir stars. It's great. Okay. So I've placed my breaches. It would appear that the Silver Twilight Lodge, shrouded in mystery, is the hub of the- um, incursions for now. Uh, what we are also going to do, so we check the Doom Threshold. It's still zero. We're going to draw our first encounter card of the game. Uh, okay, sure, Paximal, next time. Oh, sh oh my god! It's a Coven Initiate! I have to discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. Bedeviled. And another Coven Initiate. Okay. <laughs> I burned two of those. Rita and Pete start to jog down the empty, silent streets of Southside. Turning a corner down an alley, Pete's like, it's a shortcut, it'll take us there faster. Turning down an alleyway, standing in the middle of it, a hooded sh figure shrouded in darkness. The hood blows back, revealing long, wild hair. It is not Annette Mason, possessed by evil. It's that same woman from the woods. And as she looks up in the street lamp light, Rita can see that half of her face has melted away a little bit. She pulls out her small sacrificial dagger and starts to advance on them, grinning like a maniac. Our first action is going to be to evade this coven initiate so that we can get the hell out of here. I have uh, five agility, six with Pete, seven with the shoes. Let's go. Um, Rita is going to run what is Rita gonna do they need to take the alley because it's the shortcut so she's going to run through and shoulder check a garbage can uh hopefully sending it sending this uh coven initiate sprawling the hidden cults to which these witches belonged often guarded and handed down surprising secrets from elder forgotten eons so I'm gonna try to evade I'm seven to two it's a big evade so I get to evade, and because I am Rita Young, I get to either move or put a damage on this person. I am going to put a damage on it because I think I'm going to want to come back and, and kill it later. The trash can smashes into the witch's legs and sends her flying. She leaps over the prone body. Pete is hot in pursuit, and they start to run. Um, I am going to then run into... French Hill, one of the richest and most historical neighborhoods in Arkham. The many decaying mansions and estates of French Hill hold a lot of old wealth and many more secrets. This is a three shroud zero clue location. As an action, I can choose and discard a card from hand to move breaches from French Hill to the act. If they have willpower icons, they move more, but there are no breaches here. Nothing is out of the ordinary in French Hill as of yet. Track shoes allows me to exhaust track shoes to test and move again which I'm going to do so again I'm 7 to 3 on this one it's a big success Rita and Pete race down the streets of French Hill this is somewhere where they've been once before in their in their finery they've been to the Silver Twilight Lodge but they've always felt out of place here even more so now that it is essentially a ghost town everyone's inside there's a low fog on the streets. They don't know what's happening exactly, but they know that they need to stop it. 
As you approach the manor of the lodge once more, you find it dark and empty. It seems that its members are still laying low, at least for the time being. Whoop! This is a four shroud, one clue location exactly, Osav. I can take a horror to move a breach from the lodge to the act. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that twice. I'm gonna put both the horror on Pete Sylvester and hope to heck that I don't, you know, lose them for something. So, Crosshair, this is what I was referring to. The breaches go up. They're now no longer in play to become incursions. They go on the act where I can spend three of them to put a clue down on the board somewhere. Um, the lodge is indeed empty, but swirling above it is a pink and purple sky, an incredibly unnatural color, not like a sunset at all. Coming, pouring down out of it are moaning, writhing, tormented spirits called probably by the spirit of Keziah uh, and Annette down into the world. Rita looks up and just looks at Pete and is like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? And the brave young man steps up, points up at the sky, and calls out something in a language that Rita's never heard before. Is that, what is that, Latin or something? And he looks down at her and he's like, well, you know, I learned a couple things from the exorcist, I guess. And while the sky doesn't change color, the s tormented spirits do seem to pause, float back up into the sky. They vanish a little bit. <laughs> Not bad, eh, Rocky? <laughs> so I've moved a couple breaches, which is good. I've taken two horror to do it, but Pete's okay. He's a little shaken, but he's alive, and that's what that's what counts. My last action. I want to try to get this clue. It's a four shroud location, though, so it feels bad. I'm going to spend my last action to grab an old key ring. The keys are just have just been dropped on the front steps of the Silver Twilight Lodge. Clearly, the men and probably just men, honestly, of the of the lodge of the secret society all went out to the uh, unvisited aisle, and someone in his frantic departure just dropped the keys there. I'm gonna put two keys on it. And we're moving into the upkeep phase where I ready everything. Oh, I'm sorry, at the end of my turn, Pete Sylvester, he's a brave young man. He heals a horror. Ready the track shoes. Ready this coven initiate. She's waiting for them in the alley in Southside. <gasps> Who knows? Who knows when she will return? Um, we'll draw a card and gain a resource. Lucky. It's a good card. So far, so good. Somehow, through sheer force of will and some sort of survival instinct, Pete and Rita have managed to send some of the spirits back up into the darkness. They don't really know what it is that they're looking for, but there's got to be something there that they can deal with. Um, it's now the mythos phase, so I'm going to place two more breaches. Uptown and Southside. Uptown is this one over here. Yeah. So it's kind of, I don't know if it's hard to see all the resources that are on the board here, but there's one at the church, one at Southside, one at Uptown, and one at Rivertown. So nothing's in, th in danger as of yet, which is okay. We'll draw our encounter card. Right here at the Silver Twilight Lodge, Evil Past. An absolute classic. Oh, good. Okay, cool, Crosshair. Yeah, I think they're going to get a little uh, messy at some point, but we'll see. One of the spirits from the sky, as it's being pulled up into the cloud, shouts something. It's just a jumble of sounds, but somehow through the jumble of sounds, Rita hears it very clearly. Her name. In a voice that she knows intimately. It's her own. She is calling to herself, and suddenly those visions of an ancestor from the past being burnt at the stake, they come rushing back again, but it is now clear. It's not an ancestor. 
it's Rita herself. Ooh, spooky. And we move back into the investigation phase. Uh, Evil Past sits in my threat area. When the encounter deck run of, run outs, runs out of cards, sorry, take two horror and test will three. Um, this is a good example of uh, a mechanic that doesn't scale well with player count. It's more punishing in greater player counts. You have to deal with it faster because you draw more encounter cards. Um, so in solo, less of a problem. The evil past, it hurts, but it's not that bad. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I need to do now, Rita and Pete have decided, they need to see what the Lodge knows about these breaches in reality, these incursions that they're uh, having to fend off. They grab the key ring and use it to get into the house. They run straight to Carl Sanford's private study. They don't know even if they'll encounter anyone inside, but they have to find out, is there any information not about the spirit that they were trying to bind, not about anything like that, not about the spectral realm, about Annette and her power over this world. So I'm gonna use the old key ring to investigate. So I'm uh, two to two for this investigation. Uh, whatcha? Oh, hey, I didn't even have to burn a card. That's okay. We got pretty lucky there, my friends. The key ring yields great results. We grab the clue from this location. Carl Sanford's private study. Did I say Carl Sanford? I think I did. Carl Sanford's private study here at the lodge does indeed reveal a whole wealth of information, some of which they're able to process quickly and some of which they are absolutely not. It's too complex for them. There's all sorts of spells and incantations and scribbled arcane notes, things that don't make any sense. But one thing is very clear. The Silver Twilight Lodge had been preparing for this day. Whether or not they were the ones hoping to maintain the power over the Spectral Realm and use it for their own profit, we're not sure. But they were preparing, and therefore they have all the information that they need about it. Uh, let's go close some more breaches. I could also try to take out this Coven Initiate. I think I can try to do that, yeah. So we'll... Rita and Pete dash back out of the lodge. I'm going to hit my track shoes to... Because, um, yeah, I want to deal with the enemy if I can. I'm going to hit the track shoes and test 7 to 3. Great. To pass comfortably, head back into south side. Where, of course, the initiate, the witch, is waiting for them. They come around a corner... An empty cobblestone street with a light sheen of fog floating around their ankles. She's standing there, back turned. Her head turns around. Her body does not. The dagger appears in her hand, and suddenly she is racing towards them. Rita screams. Pete stumbles back, trips over, uh, trips over a, a loose cobblestone and falls down. Rita's like, Absolutely. Fuck this. Reaches down, grabs, uh, grabs a... Why would there be a piece of pipe on the ground, I wonder? It's a plank of wood. Some discarded, uh, wood, uh, maybe like a milk crate or something. She breaks off a piece and goes whoo, to swing it under the coven's, uh, the witch's legs. Um... Again, I'm testing 7 to 2 here to try to evade the witch, but I will get to kill the witch if I evade successfully. Fantastic. 7 to 2 minus 2 is a success. Rita manages to duck under the outstretched arms of the witch and, turning around with her <laughs> improvised weapon, smashes directly into her face. Boom. She falls down, crumples dead? Question mark? It's still my turn, so I'm going to use the... Is this a good idea? I think it is. I'm going to use the free trigger to discard the top three cards of the encounter deck to move a breach from south side to the current act. 
Rita motions Pete over, like, quick, get over here! And they start to scrabble, looking through the witch's cloak to see if there's anything that they can use to try to, uh, well, anything that might be useful in the um, ritual that's, uh, that's unfolding. Discard the top three cards of the encounter deck and move a breach to the current act. Discard, discard, discard. Then it said, choose a power treachery and resolve its revelation effect if able. So I have to choose demonic piping in the pocket of the cloak of the witch is a series of maybe scrawled musical notes and it just says the piper they hear some strange discordant melodies from a floating across the road they can't quite tell where it's coming from but she looks to pete and she's like i think this is what they're trying to get here and he's like what Hey, ooh, demonic piping. Oh, that'd be fun, eh? You could make, like, that's a good name for a bakery, actually, LA Spot. You could make, like, little cookies in the shape of, like, little Cthulhu's, little green piping. The revelation effect of demonic piping. This is a horrifying piece of art as well, actually. Sorry, I'll just zoom in there for you. Wow. If the piper is in play, otherwise put it into play next to the agenda deck. It says if there's three copies. There isn't currently. Ah, but Surge, ah, ah, Crosshair, good shout. Choose a power treachery and resolve its revelation effect. So I didn't, I didn't draw it. So I'm not gonna resolve Surge. I'll check what Surge means. On this cupcake, we'll be piping a portal to summon a Shoggoth. <laughs> Ellie Spot, I love it. I'm obsessed. No, no, Crosshair, it's all good, but I, th I, I am just gonna check actually. I would think not as well. Yeah, after drawing and resolving. Okay, we're good. Okay. So that's the end of my turn. The horror on Pete goes away. And we ready everything and draw uh, a card and, and gain a resource. Um, again, we've managed to, you know, keep some breaches in check for now. Um the piping that is sort of coming through the streets, the sound of this, I wouldn't even call it music, the sounds are making Rita and Pete deeply uncomfortable. It's, it's not a human sound. It's not even an animal sound. It sounds like the cosmos itself is playing music. With the realization of what that might mean they notice in interest as a breach in reality closes. And they're like, oh, if we accept the chaos, perhaps... There you go, Ellie Spot. Sorry, I wasn't clear, was I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, demonic piping refers to a creature called the Piper of Azathoth, which is a someone with a pipe, like a flute. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure what that means yet. I'm hoping it's not a recorder. My god. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, whatever the next words are, hot cross buns. English as a second long. Uh, let's draw our card and gain a resource. Guts? That's a useful card. In the mythos phase, again, we don't place a doom, instead we place a doom on hangman's hill sorry a doom we place a breach on hangman's hill and french hill i was just there Ooh, now there's one on a bunch of different locations one a penny two a penny <laughs> oh my god crosshair i'm so excited everything will be fine perfect what are you doing on music we're doing great oh very cool ellie spot it's also my third language after the language of love. But lee dee 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 That was careless whisper on the saxophone. Yeah, Rock Pants, do you think it's like a preferential price? Like if you come in with a recorder, they're like, oh, you get them for two a penny. But if you come in and just like ask, they're like, they're a penny each. <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
Oh, uh, thanks, Crosshair. Almost hourly. That's actually a great point. Thanks, hair. Overwrite. Boop. Okay. So I placed my breaches. There's now... <laughs> I placed my breaches. There's now a breach on four, five different locations. Well, sure, Ellie Spot. I mean, why did any of us learn French? I mean, I live in Canada, so I kind of had to. But, like, I live in Quebec, so I really had to, actually. But, like, oh, Ellie Spot, that's so cute. Oh, my God, that's so cute. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Rock Pants. Okay. So, I, okay, I placed my breaches, and we're going to draw an encounter card. Diabolic Voices. A classic. The sound of Rita's voice calling her name whispers through her head, echoes back and forth across her skull, and it becomes louder and louder and louder. Test will three. For each point you fail by, discard a random card from your hand. Uh, well, I don't want to fail. So I am going to toss... The thing is, I also don't want to toss two cards to this seems useless. I'm going to toss Guts to be six to three. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Gutsy or no, you can't ignore those voices in your head. Am I right? Oh, you did that hair. You got, you get one crosshair. You got one. You get one, buddy. Oh my god, okay. I failed by three, so I have to discard three cards at random. The problem with cards like this that say discard, it's almost not worth putting things in. Because if you if you put things in in order to prevent yourself from discarding cards, it's the same as if you had just discarded it. It does nothing for you, right? Alright. So I have to discard three cards at random. There's one. Lucky, not so lucky. There's Pete, not so Pete. And there's a cherished keepsake. Not so cherished. I could live and learn, but I, I, I shouldn't because I've already resolved the effects. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah! <laughs> ah, Crosshair, I'm not that mad at you. Rita has to... She pitches forward. Holding her skull in her hands, Pete is reaching down and like... He's like almost shaking her. He's like... I see how it is, Crosshair. You make fun of Arkham now. Arkham gives back to you later. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, the voices eventually culminate in a loud scream. And Rita sits up. Silence. Looks up at Pete. And she's like, let's go. Back to the investigation phase. Um, I can spend three breaches to put a clue on a location, which I will do because that will maybe help me figure out where we need to go. I'm wondering if the, uh, sorry, yes, I can remove three breaches from the act to place a clue on a location. I'm wondering if the voices in her head maybe gave her a little hint of something. Fuck off, the Silver Twilight Lodge! She's like, Pete, we have to go back. We have to go back! It's actually really bad because there's a victory point there. So I really want to go get it. Pete's like, what What are you talking about? Like, are you, you know, are you sure? She's like, Pete! He reaches up and grabs his collar. Trust me on this one. Smooths his wrinkled polo shirt. Feels the outline of his pecs. I'm just kidding to those last two things. This ain't no romance. This is a horror game. <laughs> it can be romance too. First action, we're going to move, and we're going to track shoes. Seven to three. Hey! We get to move twice. Is that what I wanted to do? Yeah. Same diff. Same diff! Romance, horror. Same diff. <laughs> they rush back through the streets as well. They're keeping their eyes... They're keeping their eyes peeled for any more... I don't know, spooky appearances. <laughs> God damn, rock pants. It's a little bit of romance and a little bit of country. A little bit of country, a little bit rock and roll is I think what I was getting at. Because the girl who can save the world is hot. Yes. Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and of course, Ellie Spot 
correctly points out here, needs some romance. Because when the two are tragically separated by cultists, which we've already seen, but when they are, when it inevitably happens again, the horror will make it, it will stand out even more, it's true. God damn it. Um, Rita practically kicks the door down and rushes with Pete down to the cellar. They've been here before, of course, not that long ago. There's the sanctum down at the bottom of the Silver Twilight Lodge. Something a voice said, it just kept repeating, whispering the word sanctum, 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 over and over. She's like, there must be something down there. So I'm going to take my second action to investigate with key ring. It gives the location minus two shrouds, so I'm two to two. Okay, so minus three, so I fail. I have to resolve the effects of the token, which I believe says place a breach on a random location. I'm going to do that. South Church. Uh oh. Oh, the church is getting hot. But then I'm going to live and learn. So I'm going to retake this test four to two. Because I'm still using the key ring, but I've lived and learned. The sanctum is locked. Rita's like, damn it. No. Just sinks down against it. And then she realizes, of course, I've had the key all along. Back pocket old rusted key first obtained on their on their first trip to the silver twilight lodge uh actually just found on the ground at the party before everything went to hell before she killed carl sanford whatever the guy's name was that wasn't his name doesn't matter she killed the guy killed the guy we're gonna test again i'm four to two this time well that sucks Um, it's a fail. So the key stays. She's lived and learned. The key does indeed fit. But the sanctum's empty. Everything's been taken. Ah, Luke, that's nice, though. I think it's nice. Like, just, just in the sense of, like, you know, there's a lot's been happening. I mean, that is correct, too, Crosshair. That's nice, Luke. Keep enjoying. I hope it's not, like, tragic stuff, you know? I'm going to use the key ring one last time. No, okay, because that was two to two, so that's also a fail. In the upkeep phase, I draw a card and gain a resource. Oh, it's perception! Oh, <laughs> well, hell! Move back to the mythos phase. Oh, I have to ready all my shit. Rita's kicking around inside this empty inner sanctum. It's just making sure. How much more music do I have? Okay, I have a bit. It's odd. It's as if everything's been moved out. Not just the stuff they needed from the island, or for the island uh, ritual, but everything. And that doesn't really make sense. Where could it have all gone? She starts poking around and sort of rapping at the walls, trying to figure out what's different about this room. In the mythos phase, uh, I have to place two breaches. Merchant district. Hangman's Hill. The merchant district is this one yeah okay just a quick board state here there's a breach on all locations except south side there's two on hangman's hill where it all ends which is really far away and two on the church which i'm hoping to get back to asap but it's time to draw an encounter card racked touching the wall into the breach touching the wall rita is just spasms with pain an electric current almost shoots through her spine. Ah. She jerks her hand back, but the pain is lessened immediately, but remains. There's no way that this stone wall was live-wired. What the hell was that? Racked is a hex. You get minus one to each of your skills during the first skill test you perform each round. Test will three. Oh, do not kill PETA. Got it, Paximo. Paximo, I promise you. I can't promise anything. Paximo, we're going to do our best, okay? That I can promise. So we're going to we're gonna fail a racked test just for funsies. Um, I'm going to go... I have one intellect versus the 
two shroud of this location. There's a plus one in the bag. I may as well use the key ring. Nope. Skull. Skull is minus X, the amount of doom and whatever. It's still a zero. That's too bad. Thanks a lot, Racked. It's okay, Paximo. They'll, they're going to be okay. Love is going to endure. I'm making the story, okay? And no goddamn tentacle pull could tell me otherwise. Crosshair. <laughs> Go enjoy f feeding the kids and enjoy yourself. If you see, if we see you soon, that'd be cool. But if not, I hope to catch you on the flippity floppity. Second action. We just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, crosshair. I, I didn't, I didn't mean it like. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, thanks, Paximo. Almost took offense. Almost. Okay. I re like I really want to get this clue. If I draw a card, if it's an intellect icon, I can commit it. What are the odds of that? Pretty they're not great. They're not bad. I really want this. She's gonna take stuff. Ooh! Oh, I can only commit one at a time! Ah! It's fine. That gives me two kicks at the can though, so to speak. That's a good draw. Well done, Scott. I've already racked out for the round, as it were. Rita's really gonna like take stock and be like, how is it possible that this room is now empty? There was a big stone altar here in the middle, right? Pete's like, hey, don't ask me, man. Like, <laughs> last time I was down here, uh, my mind was broken. And he looks at her and there's a bit of a wild, like crazed look in his eye. And she's just kind of like, mm. um, gives him a slug in the arm. Like, hey, you know, buck up, boyo. What do you think happened down here? What do you notice? And he's like, yeah, there's nothing in here. And she's like, exactly, nothing. Nothing at all. No dust. She reaches down, floor is clean. Let's, I don't know what that all meant, but let's figure out what it did mean. Um, I'm gonna use the key ring. So I'm two to two and I'm gonna commit perception to be four to two. Four to two. Yes. Just succeeded. Skin of our teeth. We lose the key from the key ring. We get a card and the clue. The card is the bow. Oh shit, that's actually really, that's actually really exciting. Oh, that's really exciting actually. Okay, okay, okay. The answer. Reaching down, Rita and Pete find grooves in the floor where the stone alts are kind of quote unquote. No, okay. All right, crosshair, good lord. The chaos room, that sounds horrible. They find um, cracks, uh, sorry, groove in the floor where the altar kind of used to be. Perhaps where it used to sit, or perhaps not. Rita runs her fingers along it over and over and over, and then realizes what she has to do, and she grabs Pete, and they run onto it, and they leap up and down, down and down again, and somehow the room around them is falling and suddenly they pop up into the sanctum as it was before. Some sort of illusion has disguised the room, but here in the sanctum, they find what they need. They find what they need, which is more incantations to, quote, close the chaos, resolve the Piper's uh, incursions. They're like, what the hell does that mean? In upkeep, we're gonna draw a card and get. <sighs> Guess who's just on the other side of the door? He turns around and suddenly, uh, she feels like maybe she's back with Anna Caslow all of a sudden. That tarot card, the Five of Swords, a hooded figure with others cowering and fleeing before it. Surrounded by five swords. Suddenly, surrounding them in the sanctum. Five hooded figures. All ready and willing to destroy Rita and Pete. And they all intone together in Latin. Or some language that maybe sounds a bit like Latin. It's hard to tell. They start to intone and the circle closes. And it closes and it closes. We're gonna have to deal with these mofos. I'm really jazzed. 
Um, uh, two locations get breaches. French Hill. Ooh, that's up to two. Oops. And French Hill. Nope. Hangman's Hill. Ooh, okay. Hangman's Hill is about ready to have an incursion. Frenchman's Hill is not looking good either, to be honest. And we draw an encounter card, of course. As breaches continue to split across the sky all over Arkham, Rita and Pete find themselves in the Silver Twilight Lodge's sanctum room, hidden away, surrounded by hooded men closing the circle on them. Draw a Mythos card. Ooh, the Witness of Chaos. Spawns at the location with the fewest breaches. That would either be south side or here at the silver twilight lodge i'm gonna spawn it here. i'm gonna spawn it here at the silver twilight lodge a little crazy just a little crazy but i think this is the right play behind oh i have to turn the music over too gotta turn the record over A cackling fills the room. It is not Annette. It is not even Kazaya. It's a woman Rita and Pete have never seen before. But the woman steps out from the... Ah, good, Crosshair. You've arrived just in time. Guess what I drew in my upkeep, Crosshair? Oh, sorry. You can't see it. It's hoods. My horrible weakness. That's hit me for hell every time. And look what else I drew in the middle of this phase. An enemy! The Witness of Chaos. It's worth a victory point, though. <laughs> South side. <laughs> this humanoid witch will hunt, and when it enters a location, it places a breach. Bad news bears for us, folks. We are going to try to take both of these mofos down like that. I have a plan. I have a plan. Is it a good plan? No. <laughs> Is it a plan? Yes. <laughs> okay. The the woman opens her mouth and it's more of a bleh. Opens her mouth and out of it tumbles in this sort of horrible guttural voice. The Piper is coming. Chaos is coming to this world. You cannot stop it. There is nothing you can do to stop it. Rita and Peter are just both like, Ugh! and they clasp hands behind their backs, and they get ready to kick some ass. Let's go. Okay, here's the deal. Oh, this is not an aloof person. They're here. Okay, and Racked. Racked says, if there's an exhausted witch at your location, I can successfully get rid of Racked. So, I could evade the Witness of Chaos, um, test Racked, and then start dealing with hoods. If I do this, I'll have to take an attack from Hoods and another attack from Hoods. Still think it's worth it. I want to get rid of Racked, like, real bad. So, first action. Use, bracing herself on Pete's back, Rita leaps onto the stone altar and uh, aims to pull Pete up onto it as well so they can clamor up through the ceiling and try to escape the Witness of Chaos. I'm going to evade the Witness of Chaos. Um, where the hoods, where the hoods, where the hoods at? They're right here. They're right here. <laughs> I have five, six, seven agility minus one because I'm racked. Six to two. Successful evade. So I'm going to not do anything with this Witness of Chaos. But now I'm going to test for Racked. Uh, I take an attack of opportunity from Hoods. The swarming men around them try to grab at their ankles and pull them down. Rita's a bit too fast. She's worried about Pete, but the guy's strong. He's kicking with all his might, trying to pull up out of the room. The pain caused by this witch, clearly, uh, who I guess is controlling these hooded men? Unclear. Uh, is stronger now, but she realizes she can 
grit her teeth and just get through it if she if she has to. I'm testing racked. I have four agility. This test is automatically successful, but I have to draw a chaos token anyway. Ooh! Well, now that's good. Ah, if I had known, it's fine. Pain goes away. Last action. We're going to evade and try to get away from hoods. Um, I'm going to have to take another attack here, but it's okay. Uh, I have seven agility against the three of this son of a gun. Okay. When you evade hoods, it attacks you. So a damage goes on me, a horror goes on Pete. But I evade and I move. And I will hit track shoes to move again. Seven to three. Yeah, good. Back to south side. Because here's the thing. I'm going to get my weapon ready and I'm going to start shooting these mofos while we try to get some breaches off locations. I have two of the three clues I need to advance the act. No incursions yet, but they're about to happen, I can tell. Yeah, they're going to happen soon. And I took some damage there. At the end of my turn, Pete heals a horror. Dynamite would be excellent right now. Three health. Crosshair, three health. Four health. I could have put a damage on the Witness of Chaos, but I didn't because I didn't. I, need, I needed the trigger and I didn't know it was going to, yeah. Too bad. That would have been amazing. If only Rita could take dynamite. They rush out of the building. And they don't stop running until they've reached the foggy streets of Southside again. The sky is now blazing above them. There's no breaches or, or any sort of ghostly spirit figures or spectral figures here in Southside. But it really seems to be all over the place. There's a huge concentration of power over at Hangman's Hill and some down by the South Church. The massive Romanesque building towers over the rest of Uptown, light shining from within its stained glass windows. Father Michael has made it a point to keep the church open at all hours, and despite the strange happenings throughout the town, tonight is no different. That might be where they go, but I definitely need to get my bow out and deal with it that way. Pete collapses into Rita's arms. He's like, what the hell was that? Who are those people? And Rita just looks at him and she's like, it doesn't matter, Pete. It doesn't matter who they are. It just matters that they want to take my freedoms away. They want to take my life. And they think I'm less than human somehow. They think you're less than human, Pete. And that is unacceptable. Her hand balls up into a fist. She's getting ready to fight. Upkeep, we ready everything, including these shoesy woozies, hoods, witness of chaos. Kill. Um, draw a card, gain a resource. Hey, let's take heart. Would have been more useful earlier. It's okay. We're going to place two breaches here, and hopefully, again, we're not going to screw ourselves up. One, two, three. Merchant district gets a resource. A breach, sorry. Breaches everywhere. South Church! I need to deal with South Church, like, stat. The church just to their south <laughs> in Uptown erupts in fire. Not, not literal flames, but there's a burst of energy and light and a sound somewhere between a train whistle and a flute. Rita looks at Pete and she's like, we got to go that way right now. On Wings of Darkness, test agility four. If you fail, take a damage and a horror. A night gaunt swoops down from the sky and grabs you with its clawed hands, carrying you off into the night. Holy, what the, f what the hell is going on? Uh, I have seven agility against the four of the test. Huge success. He grabs Rita at the last... I know, right, Rock fans? Uh, at the last possible second, Rita grabs Pete and... Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, sure. Rita grabs Pete and he hurls him into uh, a nearby doorway and then jumps down the small little stairwell herself as a beast with huge leathery wings swoops down and then back up and away. Pete pokes his head out looks down at Rita and he's like, I think we should have brought a gun or something. Mm -hmm. 
Rita. I don't, this doesn't make any sense, folks, but bear with me here. Rita emerges from the stairs in her bald fists is now a beautifully carved, ornate bow. Possibly sort of Central American. It's definitely ancient, but the carvings on it are absolutely brilliant. They speak of jade and greed and death. Pete's like, does a double take, and he just looks up at her, and she's like, better than a gun, Pete. Better than a gun. She draws the bowstring taut, slings it across her back, and we are ready to go. So I've played this ornate bow, and we're moving down to South Church. And we're going to try to deal with whatever horrible thing is happening at South Church. So one shroud, zero clue location. Oh, I can resign here. Yeah, that's nice, eh, Crosshair? Many fearful citizens are seated at the church's wooden pews, praying and whispering among themselves. As the light has burst out from inside of the church, they're all huddled together, looking up towards the ceiling where something is coalescing in the light. Action. Draw the top card of the encounter deck, then move all breaches to the current act. Last action. Pull the top card of the encounter deck. You know you hate to see it. We're pulling the top card here, folks. Centuries of fucking secrets. Absolutely the worst. Like, absolutely. Oh, it's absolutely infuriating. The light starts to coalesce into the shapes of actions from Rita's past week. Silver Twilight Lodge, Kazaya. And then it starts to coalesce into other figures. Figures grabbing women and forcing them to the pyre where they are burned at the stake. Figures shouting witch. The people huddled in the pews look up and tears well up in their eyes. Um, okay, I drew the top card of the encounter deck, so I'm moving these goddamn breaches to the act. We're going to close these breaches because we are we are going to take heart and we are going to deal with this. Centuries of Secrets says test will five. For each point you fail by, discard the top card of the encounter deck. I have four will. Pete and I. The Elder Thing fails me. Place a breach on a random location. This could be really bad. Oh, Hangman's Hill. Okay, a lot is happening all at once. So I'll just explain what's going on here. The Arkham taketh. The Arkham taketh some more. <laughs> so, um, in viewing these visions... Rita and Pete are shaken, and they start to recognize maybe even prominent members of the historical society, prominent members of history in this town. Arkham's secrets being dredged up and played out like some horrible movie for everyone in the church to see. A crying baby rings out in the silence. Um, I pulled a ten. I pulled a elder thing, which is minus three. I placed a breach on a random location, which was Hangman's Hill. So there was an incursion there. Something has landed in Hangman's Hill, where it all ends. Sorry. Uh, I had to resolve an incursion. I removed the breaches. I put a doom, and I put a breach on connecting locations uptown. However, I did fail. So I get to take heart, draw two cards, and gain two resources. You love to see this. This is good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, we like this very much. Mm. And now I failed by four, so I have to discard the top four cards of the encounter deck. I obviously don't want a curse. I know what my I know what my luck is like here. That's a curse. <laughs> Immediately. Whoa! There's two of them in the deck? Damn, I'm discarding enemies. Oh! I discarded three enemies though! That's good. Okay. The reason I'm sad is that I have to deal a direct damage to me and to Pete. Paximo's going to be mad. But I'm going to say this to Paximo before Paximo returns. It's not dead. Something about the light show just smashes him in the chest. He sits down. He just slumps down on a pew. And he's like, Rita, I can't, 
can't. I just can't do it anymore. She's like, Pete, you son of a bitch. We're in this together. If I can't count on you, who can I count on? He's like, I just can't do it, man. Rita draws herself up to full height, takes Pete by the shoulders, forces them back as well, and looks him in the eyes. If you can't come with me, can you at least protect these people? Pete looks around. Hi, Paximo. Pete looks around at the people in the church. Teary-eyed, tired, dirty people. And he looks at her and just nods. Yeah, you know, I'll do my best. She's like, great. You're gonna make... You're gonna make a great hero one day, Pete. But sometimes heroes have to do the things that nobody else can. She gets up with her bow and strides out of the church. I still have a free trigger window to place a clue on a location. I'm spending some breaches to do that. Um, location. Oh, fuck. Hangman's Hill has the clue that I need. Oh, actually, I think it maybe even has two, which is pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Maximo, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't know. Pretty much, Ellie's fault. That's the game plan. Okay. You know. So, Pete's not dead, obviously. He's just been lost for a while. The Witness of Chaos and hoods. Mm. You never know, Luke. <laughs> sorry. That made it sound really dirty, and I, I didn't mean it like that. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so, so sorry. So sorry. The hooded figures marching out into the street with the witness of chaos in their le uh, leading them. Oh, I have to place a breach on this location. Oh, this is gonna go real bad, folks. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Got a bad feeling about this. Um, oof, I'd love to take out that witch as well. Upkeep. Draw a card, gain a resource. Resourceful? I could get Pete Sylvester back. Oh, did I spend four for the bow? Yeah, I did, because I got two from... I got two... I got one just now, and I got two from Take Heart mythos phase. I now have one doom, and I have to place two breaches. The breaches in space and time and reality continue to tear and rip. Rita's not quite sure what those voices in her head were, or why she was somehow speaking to herself from the sky, or what this flute music is. She just knows she needs to take out a few very important people. One goes on French Hill, Incursion! That's bad. So, the incursion means we remove all of the breaches, place the doom, place a breach on each connecting location, and then the other location will be South Church. We just came from there, that's okay. Paximo, that's why... Here's the thing, Paximo. I quite like this game. It was only introduced to me quite recently by friend of the stream, Peace Clarticus. Uh, sorry for calling you out there, Peace Clarticus. Um, I, I, I do have a big, you know, enjoyment of LCGs and story games and, and you know, and the mythos and that sort of thing. Um, but there's a lot of people out there already who play, who, who do podcasts or live streams or uh, recorded streams of the campaign. And the focus is always on, you know, winning or crazy deck building or whatever. For me... I love the stories that come out of playing because some, what you draw determines what you can do. Obviously, you can, you know, make your deck better and, like, try to make sure that, like, every time you draw a card, it's, like, one that you're going to want and, like, you know, try to blaze through the scenarios because you know them really well. For me, and for Crosshair, I think would agree here, the, the story is the reason for playing. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, I placed my... I placed my breaches. We're now at two out of seven doom. I'm just there for the kills. Terror unleashed. If there are no breaches on your location, place a breach on your location. 
there are. You must take X damage or horror. X is the amount of doom and breaches on your location. One. I'm going to take a horror. I like the way you think. Up in the sky, swirling tendrils uh, morphing back and forth from figures to animals to beasts to spirits to ghosts. Rita is not having it. Um, <laughs> but there you go. I know what I want to do. I know what I really want to do. And I think this might be Rita's plan. I need to go get that clue to continue to progress. I need to deal with these breaches, but I also need to deal with these enemies. Move to French Hill using track shoes. Evade the witness. Shoot the hoods. Feels good. I feel like that's the game plan. Or, so I'm done running. I'm done running. I would move in, I would have two actions. They would engage me, and whenever I invade them, I deal into damage. Okay, no, no, that's not as useful right now. Uh, that might be useful for the next turn. Rita's marching out into the street. She's uh, essentially, I don't know, like maybe a soldier almost? I've got five agility, six agility, sorry, six to two. The movement will succeed. Hey, you never know, Crosshair. Woo! Um, Rita had to leave Pete behind at the church. And she has these incantations and, and information on closing breaches and this understanding that if she just gives in to the chaos, then it will kind of also perhaps close the breaches. It's the fact that people are rebelling against the chaos that is causing them to continue to expand, perhaps giving in to them. She's interrupted in her thoughts by the approaching witness of chaos at the head of the Gang of Hoods. Um, do I want to use my... I want to use my resourceful, like, ASAP, so I think I'm gonna... I'm going to... Just think in here, folks. Well, they're both pretty good things to use it on. And resourceful allows me to recur a card. Lucky, live and learn, take heart, Pete. You love to see Pete. <laughs> I'm going to evade the Witness of Chaos resourcefully. Rita backpedals quickly, turns the corner, slides through an open window in a shop, and starts to make her way crouch towards the other side. She's trying to get away from the witch so that she can target some of the hooded men with her bow and arrow. Uh, I am evading five, six, seven to two. Big evade. So I evade the dude, lady, person. <laughs> I put a damage on it. Uh, and resourceful goes off so I can recur a survivor card, which I will. Pete Sylvester comes back to hand. And I can't play Pete because I'm still got to deal with these hoods. However, this is it. Crosshair, cross, don't cross, cross your fingers, don't cross your fingers. Whatever you would normally do to ensure chaos, just do the opposite. <laughs> I'm fighting using this ornate bow. Rita tensely draws the gunner. Hello, welcome to Doomed in the Clutches of Chaos. That's the name of the scenario, not the situation. We're in. Might need to take a quick break shortly, folks, for like drinks and such, but I think I want to see how this test goes first. We're fighting. She's going to tense the bowstring up over the side through the open window, aiming for the hooded man at the head of the pack. Her hand is ready, and she's got a few more arrows ready to go. Fight using agility. I have six agility. Plus two is eight to three. Okay, <laughs> I'm so, so tempted. Oh, I'm so scared, I mean. Kung Fu Fenris, hello! So I spend the um, ammo on Ornate Bow. Rita shoots, shoots, shoots again. 
There's a man with a, an arrow through his chest in the street. Another one with an arrow in his leg stomping off. The hoods disappear. Uh, now I don't have any ammo, unfortunately, which is not so good, but that's okay. Um, pew, pew, pew! Exactly, Rocky. Kung Fu Fenris, things are great in my life, and uh, the scenario is going okay. It's going okay. Uh, let's take our um, enemy phase. No enemies right now. Upkeep, we ready the track shoes. And we ready the Witness of Chaos, who is here. Not looking so good right now. The door behind Rita bursts open, and... <laughs> 65%, right, Crosshair? 65%. There you go. That's a pass, right? The door slams open behind her, and stalking in is this old woman. Her fingers seem to be growing down towards the ground as she hunches over more and more. She points a long, extra long finger towards Rita and just mutters the words again, the Piper of Azathoth is coming. Draw a card, gain a resource. Ooh, it's Alter Fate. It's a good card. If we're gonna do the Mythos phase. Yeah, exactly, Kung Fu Fenris. I want to treat it that way, story-wise, anyway. There's a lot more mechanical stuff that I could probably be doing better at, but that's the game plan. We're going to place two breaches on the locations. Ready? South side. Breaches continue to open throughout the city, spirits pouring out of them, and French Hill. That's where I am! Okay. And now, oh, we draw our encounter card, and then we take a quick break, folks. Chaos Manifest. Test Will 3. Place a breach on X different random locations where X is the amount you fail by. Cross here, you're going to like this. Whoops, sorry. Move over a little bit. You look upon the face of true chaos. Everything you have ever known, everything you have ever loved, it is all meaningless by comparison. Damn. 20k words of text. Damn, Kung Fu Fenris. Uh, do I have any will icons? Brr. I'm not spending Pete Sylvester. Oh, I'm never gonna pass. Oh, I'm never gonna pass. Good gotcha! Oh! Oh! Puen, 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 puen. The face of the witch rises, and beyond it, energy, teeth, grinding, melding, the face of chaos itself. Rita, snugly, smugly, knocks another arrow and just looks up, and she says, I'm not scared of you. So nothing happens. We move back to the investigation phase. Huh. <laughs> We're still going, but I'm going to go to our BRB screen because I'm going to BRB. Folks, it's going well. We'll be right back. What is happening, folks? We're back. I've got myself a new drink, a more celebratory one. Kung Fu Fenris has been posting while I've been away, which is good, and I want to acknowledge here. Um... Once I get it to 100k, wrap a bow on it and make it a novel. Kung Fu Fenris, can I ask, when you talk about a solo RP product, like, it wouldn't be, like, mechanics, right? Like, it's not, is it a, it's not a game that you're writing. It's, like, story and kind of character development and stuff within the context of a game, right? I'm not sure if you can describe it necessarily, but, like, see what we can do. Uh, that was... A very exciting last round. Um, obviously. Oh, or a choose your own adventure, says Ellie Spa, which is interesting. Uh, I had to run to the washroom. I also had to get myself another drink, so I was very, like, revved up to do those things. Um, so I was like, oh, like, oh, God, I just have to pass this test. Oh, my God, an elder sign. We're back to it. The elder sign I should mention. Uh, there we go. The elder sign, until the end of the round, ignore the evade limit but there's only one enemy in place that's okay i'm running you're, you're writing the scenes of a game as they happen okay huh. ah the elder sign hello thanatosted what is happening we're having a drink to celebrate the fact that we're not yet dead uh <laughs> still have to close a lot of these breaches. We've got two... Okay, let's have a quick look here. We've got a lot of two breach locations and two doom. One on French Hill and one on Hangman, so that's okay. 
Okay, that's no, no, that's cool, Kung Fu Panda. Ah, uh, I uh, Archibald is a, uh, I believe, a Quebec brewery. I'm gonna just check that. Does it say Brasse Micro Brew Quebec? Yeah, um, this is an <laughs> American Amber Ale um, called Bouffrier Archibald, uh, but. I normally get their their red, uh, their Rus sheepy, but uh, they didn't have, so I settled for amber. It's pretty good though. Quebec beers, not so bad. Yeah, yeah, Kung Fu Thunders, it's not for me. Some people love it, and that's cool. Like I don't, I don't purport to be like, hey, why aren't you? <laughs> Basically, crosshair, Thana toasted. That sounds that sounds pretty wild. How big are your lasagnas? Damn it, I want lasagna now. Damn it, Thana toasted. Come on. Okay. We've got all the clues we need on the board. We just need to go get them. How am I doing on... Got lots of songs left? Yeah, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. IPA nerd. You know what it is? Okay. Ah, I see. Ah, I see. I see. I see. Um... Kung Fu Fenris, I hear you. It, it's more it's more the attitude of like, oh, well, you drink that kind of beer. Well, you know, I only drink complex IPAs. And you're like, just like chill out. Do you know what I mean? Like, just like chill out. Let me enjoy my f fruity summer beer. This is not, but I do enjoy them, as you all know. Okay, he's really excited, folks. We're back to it. Um, I drew a, where is it? Chaos Manifest, which we passed. Suck it. Chaos manifest. Um, now I have to deal with this witness of chaos. So. I could play. Mm, that's interesting, Crosshair. That's really interesting. Beers are much heavier than liquor, right? So, like, maybe there's like a, oh, I'm also quite full situation happening. That's interesting. Quite normally, I think the other way around, but it's fantastic. I would love to shoot the Witness of Chaos with my bow, but I don't have no arrows. The one that Rita knocks just bounces harmlessly off uh, off the witch as she stalks towards her. Mm. Interesting, Kung Fu Fenris. Oof, Fana toasted. Hey, again, I'm all for people like enjoying things. I'm obviously a snob about all sorts of things, you know? But, like, it's the forcing of the snobbery upon others that I'm like, you know what, just <laughs> just chill out. I really want to kill the Witness of Chaos. If I'm... What am I a snob about, Kung Fu Fenris? Seems I'm not too snobby. I think I'm more just passionate about things like, you know... Yeah, LCGs, and about some of my other, you know, gaming loves, certain games that I enjoy. I think in terms of snobbery, though, I just, there are certain games that I'm like, mm, well, you know, this game is better than it's, like, than others, you know. <laughs> what can we poke you about? Good luck. I will never let you. Okay. If I'm done running... I would evade it once for two damage and evade it again for a second, for a third damage, which would kill it. It seems like the most effective solution. <laughs> you can poke me about that for sure, Crosshair. I just don't understand why I was so bad. If I could shoot it with the bow, that would only be one action, but I don't want to take an attack to do that, so I think this makes the most sense. Ah, produce. We like produce around these parts. I'm done running. Butts on three. One, two. Butts. Oh, butts. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm so happy you're all here. That's creepy music. Rita's done running. She faces down this figure that has started to, uh, oh, 
No. I mean, depends, I guess. Crosshair. So I'm done running allows me to engage enemies at my location. Whenever you evade. Oh, actually. Uh, I mean. <laughs> what? Who said that? Yes, Osab. I don't know where you got that, but I love it. Okay. We're going to evade once and put two damage on this friggin' beast here. I'm six to two. Let's go. Fine by me. Rita starts running rings around the witch as she reaches out and tries to slash her. Rita is not superhuman. This thing is... Uh, well, you're not the person taking the most screen time talking about dice trays, and then John showed up. Whoa! Hey. Some of his... Some of John's best friends got him that dice tray. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just so emotional. I actually do get kind of a little choked up. It's, it's, it's a nice little reminder of things, you know? Wormwood. Go look at Wormwood's dice towers. They're really nice. <laughs> They're really nice, especially if you invest them with emotional energy. Rita is not super... Oh, 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 I understand, yeah. <laughs> I see, Ali's fine. <laughs> Rita is not superhuman, but she is the fastest person in Massachusetts. At least, she likes to think so. She is running around and ducking and weaving and diving, looking for an opening in the witness of Chaos's uh, um, waving arms of... Uh, yeah, exactly, John. I think we're talking about independent production agreements. Why do you like them? Why are you a snob about them? Weigh in in the chat now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that fucking bell. Here we go. We're going to evade again. Oh. Hey, that's a... Yeah, that's minus two, but that's still a success. scooping under a table in this abandoned restaurant coming up on the other side a steak knife has been left just clattered on the ground rita reaches down scoops it up and jabs it up into that is correct john is correct that is also correct these are yeah hang on these are facts <laughs> when i say i'm a that is true oh my god Oh my god! Ah, my friends are calling me out in the chat right now! I am a snob about parallel parking. I'm like, mm. Oh, well. <laughs> You're a little far from the curb. You know what I mean? Like, oh god. It's tough, too, because I have a couple friends who are really good at it. So I'm like, mm, that was pretty good, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, also, John is correct. John is correct. That is actually true, though. Sorry, I'm I'm pausing this whole game while we talk about this. I like fuck it if I have to do other things tonight. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, hello, DJ. Like for me, I understand I'm vegan now and that kind of changes some options when it comes to putin. I get that. For me, there are certain things that if you add them to putin, you're maybe doing yourself a disservice unless you do it unless you do it right. And there are certain kinds of cheeses you can't use. If you want to do it at home, that's your goddamn prerogative. If you serve it at a restaurant, you better have squeaky cheese carts. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, but like, and then, and then, in terms of you know music as well, Luke, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's true, Thanatos. I'm an Anglophone, and that's how I pronounce it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We gotta get back to the game. All I've done this round is ended this witness of chaos. Boom! It's a victory point. What up? Do I want to remove my evil past with this altar fate? I don't think so. I love the thematic nature of it. Oh, that's cool. Thanatos. I feel like it's very... I'm not going to say it's very Quebecois, but it's like... it's. There's like a French kind of like... lilt to it. <laughs> that's no john i i just i just prefer my games to be good you know 
um, excuse me. Last action. Guess who's decided to show up as Rita jams the steak knife deep into the guts of this writhing fingered monster. From, <laughs> from out of nowhere, the window crashes, glass shattering all over the floor, and Pete Sylvester, the hero, the man of the hour, the hero of the moment. Look at that guy. Look at that um, bland face. He's a cool dude, folks. He's a cool dude. Look at that cod piece. There you go. Boom. Um, a rock comes sailing in and basically takes the creature's head off. And he's like, I've been thinking a lot about what you're saying, Rita. <laughs> I've, I, I, I've been thinking about what you've been saying about being a hero, and I just... I need to, I need to just get out there and do the thing, you know? And she's like, shut up and kiss me, Pete. And in amongst all the broken glass and blood and fog, they smooch. I am ecstatic about how this turned out. Okay. Woo. All right. Oh, I'm excited. And we defeated some enemies. Now, if I lose because I went after those enemies, I don't think I'll be that mad. In the upkeep phase, we draw a card and gain a resource. Darn right they do! It's a passionate kiss. There have been many kisses since then, but none of them have been as passionate as... What is it from Princess Bride? I can't quote that movie like I want to. I love that movie, but I can't quote it the way I want. What's the, what's the line from... <laughs> Correct, DJ. Correct. It's a line from the end of Princess Bride. There have been, there was a list of many, uh, a list of top three kisses up to this moment. This one left them all in the dust. I don't remember. Doesn't matter. They stand together, their lips locked, and they look out at the bodies littered in the street the screaming spirits above and they're like Pete we're doing it together in the mythos phase I place two breaches hangman's hill gets a breach and silver twilight lodge gets a breach okay that's not too bad that's, that's okay I'm gonna see about maybe getting rid of some of the breaches on south side maybe I just want to rush the clues and see where we end up Drawn encounter card. On wings of darkness! Guess who's back? It's the Night Gaunt. Test agility four. If you fail, take a damage and a horror and move to a central location. A Night Gaunt swoops down from the sky and grabs you with his clawed hands, carrying you off into the night. Pete! Thank you, Paximo. You found it. Since the invention of the kiss, there have been five kisses that were rated the most passionate, the most pure. This one left them all behind. That's so sweet. What a sweet way of putting that. Oh, it's lovely. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a winged creature swoops down and grabs Pete by the shoulders. And Rita's like, I'm not losing you! And, you know, smashes a fist up into the temple of the beast, hoping to loosen its grip enough that she can grab Pete back down onto the ground. Oh. <laughs> oh, everybody loves the Princess Bride. Here it comes. You guys. I'm testing uh, 7 to 4 agility. That's fine. It's good. We don't have to do anything. That's a good treachery to get. This has been going great. Shouldn't have said that out loud. Okay. So, we have Pete. We know where we need to go for clues. Hangman's Hill. I can get there. PDQ. Question is, do I want to stop and remove some breaches in the meantime? How are we doing on uh, music here? No, we're good. It has been crosshair. We're not quite there yet. Do I? How do I feel about this? There's only two doom. Just marking down the time. 
I could, if I resolve a power treachery, it might be like demonic piping. Um, uptown funk you up. Uptown funk you up. Yeah, uptown funk you up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm either going to try to get um, a breach off of south side or one off of uptown, but I feel like it's probably an action ability here. Typically a safe neighborhood, the cobbled streets of Uptown have taken a very different mood this night. Tendrils of mist reach out from the woods that border the town, stretching over Hangman's Brook and crawling through the streets. That's a good point, Crosshair. Actually, you know what? It's connected to the most locations. Great point. So I'm going to move once. I'm not going to hit track shoes here. We are going to see if we can close some breaches. Standing side by side with Pete, they look at each other and smile. It's like a WandaVision situation. You know, they're super cute. Um, they're going to start to see if they can close some of the breaches in reality with the uh, uh, words that they learned from the Silver Twilight Lodge. Discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Hup. 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 Good. And move a breach. Whoop. Um, it did not... There were no power treacheries. I was checking as we went, so I think we're okay to do that again. I not push my luck. Oh, I don't want to push my luck because I don't want Evil Pass to go off. Eh. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah, I'm... I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm discarding the top three cards of the encounter deck. One, two, that's a power. Three. I have to resolve this primal gateway. That's fine. We didn't Pete continue to speak the words and they watch various parts of the sky just knit back together knit back together but then off in the distance a gateway to another time to another place well this is bad attached to a random location hang on let's 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 read this together shall we investigators revelation attached to a random location place breaches on it until there are exactly three Treat the attached location as if its printed text box were blank, so you can't use the actions on it to get rid of breaches. Action. Test intellect or will for to close the gateway. If you succeed, discard it. I have a plan. I'm going to place it on a random location. The church. Of course it's the church, as soon as Pete left to go after Rita, because their love called to each other. Out across the city. He also abandoned all those people in the church church starts to get pulled up into the sky by the force of something beyond the cosmos. However, because I, I have a trigger between actions here, I am going to choose and discard from play a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy, and it only costs me one resource. We make our own fate. I'm just going to discard Primal Gateway, because that feels good. Rita sees this beginning to happen. She reaches out and church. Yeah, I said, yeah, I said church. Is that not right? How do you pronounce it, DJ? Church. <laughs> um, she reaches out, looks at Pete, invites him to reach out too, and she just says no. And suddenly, South Church and Arkham is back on the ground. It's as if nothing has ever happened. She doesn't know where this power has come from, but certainly something has happened there. I'm going to move into Uptown. And I'm going to... Uh, sorry, Uptown is a, uh, a location that lets me spend an action to discard cards from hand to move breaches to the act. And if, I, if they have agility icons, it moves additional breaches. I'm just going to keep running because I feel like that's how Rita's going to win. Just keep running. Uh, oh, sorry. I have to test my track shoes. I'm 7 to 3. Delicious. Keep running, keep running, keep running. As you approach Hangman's Hill once more, a torrent of spirits ascend into the sky from the graveyard below. Kill. Well, this is clearly where it's coming from, right? The spirits howl in torment as they surround the city, their cries becoming a music of its own. 
This is a two shroud, zero clue location. It has a clue on it though, because I put one there. It has a doom and a breach on it. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a witch. Move all breaches from the hill to the act. Shuffle the deck. Hmm. Paximo's correct. We're not running. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, okay, DJ. <laughs> Paximo's correct. We're not running away from the... Oh. oh. Oh, my God. You're getting tired. Your eyes feel heavy. There is a quiet place in your mind that is whispering to you, soon it is time. Oh, of course, Alwyn's a great name, Luke. Do not ignore this whisper. For soon might be here faster than you imagine. <gasps> Whoa! Who is this? I'm very excited. Oh, nice crosshair. Oh my god. Oh my god, crosshair, the hype is real. Crosshair may or may not be teasing something that we're both involved in for this channel. Who knows? Who knows? It could be anything. My last action has to be to get this clue. I'm going in hard. We're going to investigate. Hmm? I'm sorry, that's weird. Crosshair? I think you must have been asleep. Luke Alwyn's a great name. I like it. Actually... I'm gonna be smart about this. The spirits are ascending into the sky, but Rita's like, whoa, 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 Pete, whoa, whoa. When we go in there, we might not come out again until we've dealt with her. She assumes that Annette Mason, possessed by evil, will be here at Hangman's Hill. And he's like, yeah, I know. I know, but I'm ready for it. I'm ready. And she takes a moment to knock another arrow in her bow. You knock another arrow. Place an ammo on our bow. Okay. Whew. Upkeep phase. We ready everything. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Oh, the Five of Pentacles. Wow. It's my tarot card that I wanted at the beginning of the game. Thanks so much. Mythos phase, replacing two breaches. Pentacles! Random location. Merchant district. Oh, it's up to three breaches. Woo, 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 woo. And Hangman's Hill. That's right here. Oh, and I have to draw an encounter card, of course. Chaos Manifest. Test will three. I wish I could do something about this. Um, oh dear, oh dear, that's correct. Well, it'll place breaches on random locations. Merchant District would be bad. Uptown and Merchant District would be very bad. I'm only at two out of seven Doom for now, and I've already passed the um, check Doom threshold step, so... We're at least safe for for now. <gasps> Whoa! Cragod, what is up? Informative and educational. Cragod, that's very nice. If you want to watch me on your phone from the comfort of your own bed, that's cool. I don't discriminate. So happy to see you. I hope you've been enjoying the story so far. I feel like we're on the precipice of things either tumbling into complete chaos or not. Ah, fudge. I don't want to go get that merchant district. I want to go deal with that merchant district, but we have to test this first. I can't boost, so I'm testing four to three on my random locations here. Oh! Ooh! Oh! It's a tentacle! Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Place a breach on X different random locations where X is the amount you failed by. Three. Tentacles! Yeah, me too, Gunner. <laughs> so... Rita and Pete turn around, backs to Hangman's Hill, and they watch in horror as beams of light and arcane energy just poof, hammer down into the city. They aren't causing explosions, but they can you can feel the force of them as they land. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna shuffle, and then I'm gonna go I'm gonna draw three from the top, and that'll be the three I'm going with. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Ah, testicles and tentacles. Rivertown. Up to three. Southside gets one. That's okay. And French Hill. 
is that two, two, two. I need this clue because I'm here. But I also need to deal with these other... Um... Ah, fudge. I need to deal with these other things. <laughs> Shit, damn it. Fuck. <laughs> Here's the question. I don't have to get this clue. I could go remove some breaches from other locations. Potentially, right? I could go and remove breaches from other locations, put another clue down on the board, and see how that helps. Oh, I only need one more anyway. Okay. Options. Rita's here at Hangman's Hill. We can go hunting for a witch enemy, move all these breaches. And then we have to fight an enemy, which it's probably okay. We could waste precious actions moving, go to the merchant district and try to deal with all of these um, breaches, and then on towards Rivertown. Those are connected? Ah! <gasps> I oh no, the connections lied. Look at this! Oh, I feel like such a dum dum. South Church is only connected to South. I should have checked this. The Merchant District is is um, connected to Rivertown. <gasps> That's great. That's really good because then I can go up here, move on, and try to deal with both of them. Oh God! Wait, no, Crosshair, you're right. Oh no! It's another. It's another connection. Okay. Clues are good, but not losing is better. Rita's like, damn it, we have to get back in there. I'm going to move back into Uptown, where I'm going to hit track shoes to keep moving. Seven to three, done. The commercial center of Arkham, the merchant district, is usually bustling at all hours, but tonight the dockhands and sailors have vanished, leaving you with a sense of unease. The mist over the dark waters of the Miskatonic River seems to take unnatural shapes as you watch from afar. Three breaches. Oh! <sighs> Excuse me. The Merchant District says, Action. Discard the top five, ten, or fifteen cards of your deck. For every five cards discarded in this way, move a breach from the district to the act. Can I even discard the top 15? I can't. I don't have 15 cards. So I'd only be able to discard 10. Well, it rolls over when you draw a crosshair. That's a good question. I feel like I sh... This is a good... No, no, this is a good question for the, like, Grim Rule, right? I feel like I should be allowed to. Hold on! <laughs> Thanks, Crosshair. In the meantime, we're going to consider what that might mean for me. What's still left in my deck? Um, What's still left in my deck? Break and enter. Cheap shot. Good cards. Good cards! I don't want to lose good cards. I also, it says very specifically... Draw each weakness discarded in this way, which feels pretty bad. <laughs> I only have one weakness left because I've dealt with hoods already. Mm. I don't want to put hoods back in, but I have to be able to deal with this location. It is getting crazy up in here. Okay. Rita and Pete rush into the Merchant District, and again, Arcane Energy is bombarding the region. If they're going to put out these fires, they're going to need to give it all they got. I'm thinking... What am I going to do here? I'm thinking I might just go for it and do 10. Crosshair I'm still holding, but I'm going to start by discarding 10. And if I'm allowed to discard 15, I will. I'm not actually sure how that works, though. 
Uh, if you are checking Arkham DB crosshair, it is the Merchant District location from In the Clutches of Chaos. Mm. <sighs> ah, when a non-targeting effect attempts to interact with a number of entities, draw three, search five, it exceeds. The effect interacts with as many as possible. Oh, okay. So I'm going to discard the top 15 cards of my deck, which is just 14. So I'm discarding my whole deck. <laughs> like, just wild. I have to... I'll get my deck back, at least. So there's that. Well, it's it's attempting to interact with a number of entities, right? I, I'm allowing it. Yeah, I'm discarding everything. Resourceful, lucky, perseverance, guts, take heart. I'm just seeing what else I had left. Live and learn. Oh, my unexpected courages, of course. No more unexpected courages. I get to move three breaches to the act, which I will use to put on as a clue on a random location. Actually, I'm going to do that right away. Right here. The clue right here at the Merchant District. In between. Oh, like, okay. All right, no, no, Crosshair. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. But I'm gonna deal with this first. Rita and Pete, dig around. It, you'll allow me to deal with this Crosshair because I think you'll want to see what this is. Rita and Pete dig around in the dirt in the Merchant District, and they uh, are using the ashes and the soil to make small mounds, which again, the notes from the Silver Twilight Lodge detail is a way of closing these breaches off. And suddenly, a voice sounds in Rita's head. You have failed. You have failed. Unfortunately, Crosshair, draw each weakness discarded in this way. Doesn't that suck? So if the 15th card is also a weakness, I have to draw it. <laughs> Take two damage and two horror. Place a doom on the agenda. This can cause the agenda to advance. Two horror on Pete. Two damage on me. Remove the price of failure from your deck. Search the collection for Dark Pact and place it in your discard pile, which I'm immediately going to flip and discard the top card of. Pete Sylvester... An absolute classic. This is horrible. Failure washes over Rita. There's no way they're going to be able to succeed at what they need to do here. Um, I think it balanced out. Last action. Against my better judgment, I'm going to move into Rivertown. These past few weeks, the warehouses and docks of Rivertown have been swathed in gray mist making an already quiet district even more empty and desolate. So this is an action ability to choose and discard a card from your hand to move a breach, plus one additional breach for each book icon. I have lots of books, but I have no more actions. Oh, I should have taken a horror from shuffling my deck, which I will do. At the end of my turn, horror heals from Pete. Oh, boy. So what happened? We left Hangman's Hill where Rita believes it would all end to rush back into the city where they were able to put out all of the fires in the Merchant District and move on, but not before Rita realized what this dark pact is that she made. It's not with the Twilight Lodge. It's not with the Witch's Coven. In her sleep, in her dreams... She made a deal with the devil himself, Azathoth, Chaos Incarnate. Perhaps it's what gave her her incredible ability to run track. Perhaps it's what's given her ability to survive until now. But the price of failure has come back to bite her in the butt. Dun 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 dun. Do you like the music, Rocky? Upkeep, draw a card, gain a resource. Hey, resourceful is not so useful right now. There's nothing else in discard. Okay. All right. 
pray for me. We're gonna draw two, ready? One, two. This is South Side and South Church. These are where the um, burrs, burps are going, the uh, breaches. And now I have to draw an encounter card. How are we doing? Nine left in the encounter deck. No oh bueno. Diabolic voices. You do not like to see this. You do not like to see it. Diabolic Voices gets plus one difficulty for every copy of it in the discard pile. There's two, so it's Will 5. I'm testing four versus five in this test. Um, oh my god. I might lose my whole hand here. And there's nothing I can do about it. I really don't want to do that. Because I want to keep some of these books to be able to get rid of the breaches here. I believe in me, John. I believe in Rita and Pete's ability to move past the insanity and chaos of the world around them and just find a place for their love to exist. Three, two, one. Four to five plus one is five to five. You pass on ties, which means, ladies and gentlemen, John Verrill and Rock Pants' belief in me means that we did it. Pardon my French, but we fucking did it. <laughs> yes! Get it! <laughs> Woo! That is, that is legitimately ridiculous, but I'm okay with it. Uh, have you considered John and Rock Pants that you might have some sort of power? Yeah! Bam! Looks like Hang on, hang on, hang on, no, 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 there's a joke here, hang on. Um, teamwork. Oh, there's a there's a good CSI Miami joke in here somewhere. Looks like someone made a deal with, I just made a deal with the devil joke. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there's a, there's some sort of pun in there to do with diabolic voices. But then you go, down, yeah! <laughs> A terrible impression. It's okay, folks. It's okay. <sighs> I'm glad Crosshair's not here, because Crosshair would have been very mad about that. I'm going to discard Perception, which allows me to remove three breaches from this location, which I will immediately spend to place a random clue on a location. A clue on a red... Oh, a high Crosshair! Oh, it's just, I, I'm, I was quite impressed, Crosshair. <laughs> good, bad, it's all good to me. Random location. South Church gets a clue. Ooh, it's only got one shroud. Hmm. Looked like someone used a tentacle for good. Yeah! <laughs> Damn. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, I have to I have to finish this friggin' I have to finish this friggin' thing off here. Second action. Um the energy that had been emanating from South Church, the the floating structure, Rita realizes that's that's where they need to be. It's not about bad things happening, because sometimes good things happening break the status quo as well. It's true, Crosshair, it's very true. We're going to uh, hit track shoes to keep running. Looks good. Get to move into South Church. Do I want to take all the breaches? No. No, I want to try to get this clue. Just thinking out loud here. If I get the breaches, I might be able to put another clue down and get two clues. I feel like I'll need more clues. Do I want to draw the top card of the encounter deck? No, if it's an enemy. Ah, yes. Hope! You know, fear is the mind killer, but hope is the soul crusher. 
<laughs> Eat your heart out, Frank Herbert. I oh god. Okay. Um No. I just need to I just need to rush the end right now. That's what I need to do. We're gonna look we're gonna we're gonna look around the church and we're not gonna worry about the breaches for 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 this moment. Hashtag famous last words. Um I am going to commit Resourceful? Keyring? I commit here. Commit. Resourceful and keyring. <sighs> Success. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Uh, resourceful lets me recur. Pete Sylvester. Oh my god, guys, Lowe is here. Guys, Lowe is here. Next time you're next to some sand, don't walk in a rhythm. Just saying. His book has the power. Be careful. And Paxmo is saying, when you have a moment where the characters gain a life of their own and the story sort of becomes sentient, there's a faded nature. That's a lovely feeling, eh, Paxmo? It's just like, it's not just, oh, this is how the story is going to go. It's, it's this feeling of, it couldn't be any other way. It's lovely. Yeah, I like that. Um... Rita and Pete dash back into the church. Everyone inside has vanished, gone home, maybe. And it is there that they find what they're looking for. All this time, beneath the altar of South Church, oh, sorry, in the pulpit at South Church, hidden in a secret panel in the side, which Rita saw in her visions. The last will and testament of Keziah uh, Mason. It's not Kaziah Mason. It's Kaziah... I don't remember. Kaziah the Witch. <laughs> and they pull it out. We have to spend these clues and immediately advance, which is a little scary. Not gonna lie. It said I have to immediately advance. The next breaches move. Oh! It's an enemy. This is Annette Mason, reincarnated evil. World's ending, Fred. Let's go home and watch some Matlock. <laughs> this is a humanoid witch servitor elite. Five. Six per health. Six in health per investigator. Three agility. Spawns at Hangman's Hill. It's an alert hunter. So she's coming. Annette Mason gets minus two health for each clue controlled by an investigator. Now, I don't have any because I spent them all. But hopefully we can get, maybe we can get another. I did cross here, yeah. Forced. After one or more breaches are placed on her location, we have to take a damage or a horror. She has two victory points. She deals three damage and one horror, which tells me she's like a little scary, but mostly she's just gonna knock your block off. Sorry, let's be a bit more serious about that. She's just gonna tear your limbs off. That was the end of the investigation phase, so I heal horror from Pete. They look and the last will and testament of Keziah starts to shake and tear and flame and disappear and a rumbling thunder emits from Hangman's Hill where it all ends this is annoying um, at some point somebody uploaded the card for Annette Mason and it's uh, on its side so I can rotate it but now every other card is also on its side so I'd rather these be um <laughs> She does more damage than an Eldritch Horror that fills the whole cabin of a cruise ship. I mean, how is that possible? Doesn't make any sense. In the enemy phase, a very angry Annette Mason hunts into Uptown. I mean, let's get ready to rumble, folks. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even read Act 2. I assume it's do something with her. Act 2A. This Beyond the Grave. This nightmare will not end until you stop the one behind it, Annette Mason and the spirit which possesses her. The world is falling apart all around you, and the only and the coven is only bringing the end closer. Same trigger, I can take three breaches to put a clue. Having clues reduces her health. I don't know if we're going to need that, though. Objective. If Annette Mason is defeated, advance. Six damage. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I've hunted her. Or she's hunted, rather. So in upkeep, we draw a card and gain a resource. Let's take heart. Mythos phase. We gotta place those breaches. 
The breaches continue to tear through the fabric of reality as a net may. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Crosshair. My dog can do that in his sleep. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm gonna shuffle and then I'm gonna draw two. One, two. The Merchant District and Southside. Whoa, Southside is looking dangerous, folks. It's looking very dangerous. The breaches continue to land in the, in the town of Arkham as Rita and Pete realize what they need to do. Annette is out in the world, and she will not be stopped. Chaos Manifest! Test Will 3. Place a breach on X different random locations. X is the amount you failed by. Oh god, Crosshair, you're right. I can't afford to fail this, hey? I have four will. Five, because I'm gonna commit this commit commit this copy of Pete Sylvester. Five to three. I have to do this. Now that could have just as easily gone the other way. But that's zero, five. Zero. Success. The chaos continues to strike down around, but at least it seems at this moment that nothing too bad has happened yet. Investigation phase. Um, a few? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'd like to... Oh, big oof, actually. Okay, I want to use track shoes, but I can't be. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is the thing, Crosshair, right? Like, I could have very easily had three Doom, boop boop, four Doom, five Doom, boop boop, six Doom. You know what I mean? Like, it could have, it could have all. Oh, sorry, you can't quite see beyond the chat, but like, there's a whole bunch of places at two. It's not feeling good. Okay. Moving into south side, and we're closing a couple of these breaches. Uh, at least, one, at least one, maybe two, and then we're gonna move on and uh, start dealing with Annette Mason. Uh, right. South side just says discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. One, two, three. I'm checking for power treacheries. There's a power treachery. It's demonic piping. Revelation put it into play next to the agenda deck. Oh god, I don't want the Piper of Azathoth to get here and kill me! Uh, let's spend these three breaches to put another clue on a location. Whoop whoop! Mix up the icing! <laughs> now, this is an interesting question. Do I just keep running, try to get the clues? Oh, Roger Twy, what is up? How you doing? Welcome. This is a very interesting play. Look what I found, level two. Sorry, so you can all see it. It says, play after you fail a skill test by three or less while investigating. Discover two clues from among your location and connecting location. So if I fail to investigate here, or rather, at either of these locations, I can grab both clues, and all of a sudden, Annette Mason is down to two health. I think that's the play. I think that's the play. Somehow a normal human size and also 20 feet tall at the same time. The evil spirit of Kaziah resides inside Annette Mason as she stomps down the street towards Rita and Pete, who flee into Rivertown. They're both staring at each other like, there's no way, we're never gonna be able to do this. How the hell are we gonna do this? <laughs> General Zod, whoa, thank you. I feel like that's, maybe that's not a compliment. I'll take, you know, I'm, I'm taking it as a compliment. Um, Rita's like, how are we gonna beat this this person? What, what is that? And they realize they just need to figure out what her weakness is. They start to piece together all the information that they received from the Silver Twilight Lodge, the, the 
the now torn up and burnt uh, will and testament of Keziah. What do they know about Annette Mason and the spirit of Keziah? What can they do? Last action. I'm going to investigate this location. I am two intellect to three. Tentacle. Automatic fail. I'm going to play. Oh, I should have played take heart. I forgot. It's okay. I'm going to play look what I found. Play after you fail a skill test by three or less, which I did. Discover two clues from your location and connecting locations. All of a sudden, Kaziah Mason's not looking so scary. Because, if we recall, folks, she gets minus two health for each clue controlled by an investigator. Oh, I'm coming for you. I am, I am on my way, Kaziah Mason. Or, sorry, Annette. I keep saying Kaziah. Who's that? It's the other witch. Annette hunts into Southside, sniffing the air, determining that there is indeed blood in the water, as it were. That was a tentacle. Draw a card, gain a resource, it's fucking dark packed. Oh, oh God. Um, oh. This is a weakness that puts the price of failure back in my deck. Hi, Pete, bye, Pete. Oh, oh, thanks, Pook. <laughs> well, that was my blood in the water. Sorry about that. Oh, that's heavy. Maybe I'll do it. I might have time. In the mythos phase, we're going to shuffle and draw two locations to breach here. Ready? One and two. Rivertown and Southside. Putting a breach on Southside is bad. It's Annette's current location, so I have to take a horror. It goes on Pete. And we draw an encounter card. Read in Pete. Look up from everything that they've been able to assemble. They realize now what they have to do. They realize her weakness, the way that they're going to be able to defeat her. <gasps> it's demonic piping. This has Surge, so I'm going to draw the encounter card right away. Treat one. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Um, put demonic piping into play next to the agenda deck. Whoop! If there are three copies of demonic piping into play. It's so horrible. It's like bag... Imagine bagpipes, but even crazier. <laughs> Sorry, even more um, maddening. Discard them and spawn. <laughs> Cease your infernal tootling! If there are three copies of demonic piping in play, discard them and spawn the Piper of Azathoth engaged with its prey. Now this is going to get really hot really fast. I don't know what this enemy is, but it's looking bad. I assume the prey is me. This this is an elite <laughs> this is an elite monster. 5 fight, 7 health, 2 evade. It preys on the least remaining sanity. It's an alert hunter with retaliate. Sugar skulls for the sugar god. Forced. When the enemy phase ends, it attacks each investigator in its it is not engaged with at its location, regardless of whether it's ready or exhausted. Victory 2. Victory 2 is good. So this is some sort of weird slime um, monster that actually has horns coming out of its head. Uh, it's an agent of chaos. I suppose it makes sense. I also drew a card with Surge. This is really bad. Um, Toil and Trouble is a hex. Obviously, Annette Mason is casting a horrible hex on us using all of her power. No, no, no bad. Revelation. You must either resolve the revelation ability on the topmost power treachery in the encounter discard pile or resolve an incursion. An incursion is the one that puts a doom on your location and puts breaches around that would put an incursion at south side i can't do that i can't do that so i have to do the other thing which is resolve the topmost power treachery the topmost power treachery is demonic piping uh resolve the revelation ability if the piper of azathoth is in play deal a horror to each character Okay, so I just take a horror. That's okay. It goes on Pete. <laughs> it goes on Pete. We don't like it, but that's where we are. Okay, team. Here's the answer. 
Let's see if I can let's see if I can figure out what's gonna go on here. The infernal sounds of horns and bagpipes and the wails of I I know rock pants. Pete Sylvester level zero and level two are from the core set. Um, oh no, Pete Sylvester level two is from Dunwich. I'm sorry. Pete Sylvester level zero is, I, actually they're both probably from Dunwich in that case. Anyway, stupid good. Stupid good. Like OP, frankly. It's good. Uh, especially in a, in a, in a faction that wants to be taking damage and horror. He like automatically heals it. It's really good. <laughs> Gunner is correct. Basically an Irish parade or procession. Coming down the street towards them is a beast, the likes of which neither Pete nor Rita has ever seen. Now, it is worth victory too, which is two victory points to experience if I manage to kill it. Uh, it's way too late in the game because I'm also staring down uh, the... Hey, there you go, Roger. I like that. Uh, I'm also staring down reincarnated evil Annette Mason, who will kill me straight up. So I need to I need to deal with her. So, how do we do this? Oh, I'm sorry. She should be. So it's very simple. We evade the Piper of Azathoth. We evade the Piper of Azathoth, we rush over, and we shoot Annette Mason with this bow and arrow. That's the game plan, folks, and we're doing it. The beast is coming down the street. It is moving slowly, and it is the maddening sound of its pipes and horns that drill into their brains. They can't escape. Rita grabs Pete by the arm. <laughs> Let's fucking go! <laughs> Rita grabs Pete. And they take off down the street. She's like, I know what we have to do. I know what's going to send that thing back to where it came from. I have seven agility against the two of the Piper. This is the uh, this is the auto fail token you you, you may have all noticed. Uh, okay. Does it have alert? It does. Alert is the keyword whereby uh, you have to. It attacks you if you fail to evade it. So I will take two horror. If I put them both on me, I die. So it is with incredible sadness <laughs> that we once again bid adieu to young Pete Sylvester. Oh! Now, I want to assure Paximo, who may or may not have gone to bed because of the kids and because of all these things, but I want to assure Paximo this love story will never die, okay? Pete's not gone. Sorry, Pete's not dead. He's just gone for now. Exactly. Exactly, Crosshair. As they start to run the music and the sounds from the creature start to drag them back in. And Pete looks at her and he goes, I know what it means to be a hero now. And he lets go of her hand and pushes her forward a little bit. He's dragged backwards, allowing her to just escape and run off down the street. When she looks back, he's gone. He's gone. Thing is, we have to try again, uh, because I have to kill the other dude this round. Oh my god, I have to kill the other person this round! Ah! <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what a world, what a world. I'm six to two! Yeah! Suck it, the Piper of Azathoth. Uh, using my reaction ability, I get to move, free action, to south side, where I engage Annette. Annette has five fight, six health, minus four health, because I have two clues, three evade. I can't afford 
If the world is a pipin', don't bother griping. Yeah, exactly, Roger Twy. No need to gripe or complain. Let's just get her done. Folks, this is the game plan. Ready? I, I actually have nothing to commit, Crosshair. This is the wildest part. Okay, see you, Luke. So good to see you. I have a card that lets me, you know, if you fail. I have a card that does nothing. And I have a curse. <laughs> it's all so terrible. Rita knows she has to do this for Peach. She has to do this for their... What is that? Love? She has to do this for Arkham. She has to do this for her own survival, if nothing else. I'm gonna fight. I have, uh... I'm fighting using the Ornate Bow. It uses Agility. I have six of that. Plus two is eight. And it deals three damage. So I'm fighting eight to five because it has five she has five combat eight to five i honestly don't even think i can watch this is this is way more down to the <laughs> hester spaghetti <laughs> it's not the right campaign i don't have to take a horror for that i actually don't know this is way too down to the wire because i definitely die if i don't make this shot now, thankfully, I don't have to worry about the skill involved in this shot. I just have to worry about the chaos bag. I'm three up. I'm not going to say it, but the skulls and the elder things are both minus three. That would still be a pass. Crosshair, I can't look. I honestly... Crosshair, I'm going to click in three seconds, okay? And you're going to you're gonna tell me what it is. I can't look! <laughs> ah! Is it the right card? Is it the right token? <gasps> Did I click? <gasps> it's a minus two. Oh. <gasps> Rita lets fly with an arrow. It is filled with her rage, her pain, her confusion at everything that's been happening to her all of her survival instincts, everything she has been feeling for Pete poured out in a single arrow from a bow. She doesn't even know where it came from. Kaziah may, uh, sorry, I see, keep saying Kaziah. Annette has six health, minus two for each clue, that controlled by me. So she only has two health and I do three damage. Annette smashes backwards into the void and we advance the act act to be the living and the dead somehow despite all odds you have managed to defeat the resurrected spirit which torments annette mason she passes out an arrow in her chest and collapses to the ground but the revenant inside forces her eyes open and puppeteers her body in a lurid display. Ugh. Hi, Shard and Jay. We're just finishing up, actually, but it's, it was a great, it was a baller story, and we won edge of our seats. Fools! The ragged, disembodied voice of Kaziah declares through Annette's lips as she rises once more. You are not but insects. I have seen the truth. I have seen the face of chaos itself, and you will soon be a part of it. Come, join me. Kneel before the Black Throne and be one with the universe! I think so, Crosshair. You shudder as the words reach your ears. Nothing she says makes sense to you, but you can tell her intent is, in, intent is dark and wicked. Leave this... You, oh, I'm sorry, this is Rita this time. Leave this place. You muster up the will to command. Go back to the beyond from which you were summoned and never return! Resolution 1. Team... Team, we did it. Look, did I draw a few tentacles? A few auto fails? Fail a few important things? Yes. Best two things that happened this game. Obviously, that pull was wild. Better one. I had to go plus one to succeed. Um, and through the powers of John and Rocky combined, I made it. Resolution one. The spirit cackles as she hears your words, but her laughter is soon cut short. Oh! Emerging from the trees, the trees, the remainder of Annette's coven, led by the red-haired witch Erin, surround Annette wordlessly. 
Aaron gives you a solemn nod, her conviction showing through her stern demeanor. Understanding why have they have come, you step aside and allow them to do their work. Oh, I thought they were going to, like, just, like, stab everything. <laughs> no, no. One of the witches draws a circle in the dirt around Annette. A circle? While the rest bind her with tendrils of searing energy. The revenant shrieks and wails in agony, but the witches dare not cease. Finally, as their chants rise to a crescendo, Aaron pierces the sanctity of the circle with her knife, prepping, pressing firmly against the air and straining as though she were attempt to pierce solid stone. Keziah's ghost departs in a whirl of spectral mist, dissipating into the thin air with a final cry. Annette's body, unsupported, collapses to the ground. It's over, you say, placing a hand on Aaron's shoulder. No! She replies harshly, gesturing to the sky above. The storm clouds have all disappeared, Yet you count not a single star in the night sky. The borders of the horizon frame the empty void above you, a breach so enormous you had not even realized it was there. How long had it loomed over the city while you spent your time warding against lesser incursions? You ask what can be done to close a breach of such size. She clenches her jaw. I don't know, but I know who does. She kneels over Annette, raises her hand, and slaps her hard across the face. <laughs> Annette jerks awake, startled out of her catatonic state. Is this what you wanted, sister? Annette dr Aaron drags her to her feet, forcing her to look up at the catastrophe she's wrought. You know it isn't. Annette replies, her voice ragged. I only wanted us to have... I wanted all... I only wanted us all to have some semblance of the strength she possessed. I had no desire to use it in the same way she did. But the spirit took control, and I could not resist. She lowers her head in resignation. I'm sorry, sisters. I failed us all. I was not strong enough. I'm going to ask people to vote on this, probably. You've done. The investigators must decide. You've done enough harm. We'll handle it from here. Uh, we have to continue alone. Or we need your help to fix this. We can ask for assistance. You're under arrest. If one of the investigators has the detective, police, or agency trait, we don't. Then teach me how to be stronger. We have to have the sorcerer, miskatonic, or scholar trait, which we don't. So it's down to the first two. Either we'll handle this from here, or we need your help. I know where I'm leaning. I want to hear from people in the chat. Do we ask Annette to help, knowing that she was possessed by an evil spirit, but that she wrought all of this? Or do we go it alone? In the meantime, investigators earn experience equal to Victory X, baby! Which is, I believe... Three in the victory display and one on the board. So that's four victory points, which feels... Oh, so good! I mean... Rhea is a lone wolf. I feel like she was... She sided with the coven up until this moment. Ruff, ruff! I'm seeing a lot of lone puppers. Paximo? I'm gonna say this. <laughs> Rock pants, I sure friggin' hope so. I doubt it somehow. I'm gonna say this, Paximo. Rita's not going it alone. She's gonna have Pete with her. We don't know where Pete went, but I bet you she's gonna be fine. The investigators continued alone. <laughs> Jerome is dead. The investigators continue sorry investigators rita and pete continue alone i'm gonna say i'm not sure if that was the uh thing i was expecting from people rumber to save thank you it's quite late but i want to do the in the mm, i just want to see how long the uh twist of the interlude is ah, it's quite long we're gonna do the we're gonna do the interlude next time we're going to do the interlude next time, folks. The next time we return to Doomed, be it next week or the week after, or whatever, I don't know, we're going to be doing Rita, Young, and maybe Pete Sylvester, and maybe Annette Mason? No. No, we're not. No, not Annette Mason. Sorry. Rita Young, Pete Sylvester, Pita, love story for the ages, before the Black Throne and the, like, interlude that goes before it. Thank you, Gunner. That's a real sweet thing to say. Folks, I have such a blast on these streams. Not everybody knows the game. Not everybody understands the game. Uh, 
I love playing it. I love telling stories while I do. Not personal st You all understand what I'm trying to say here. Dope! It was a great game. I honestly, I don't think you get that kind of excitement. Except when you play Netrunner. Or other LCGs of that nature. I'm going to sign off because I'm super hungry. <laughs> uh, yeah, check out Discord. Liz and I in particular are going to be quite busy with things in the coming week. So I'm uh, hoping that there will be streams through the week. But we're going to have to find out. Folks, thank you ever so much for joining me tonight. That was a wild ride. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to keep thanking you. Head over to Discord for, Discord for all the details. We've got John and RPG Clinic streaming through the week. And of course, it's Exalt Witch Academy Season 2, Episode 9, tomorrow at 1800. Really looking forward to that. Take care, y'all. I don't care what time zone you're in. Do yourself a favor and have a glass of water. Take, take, take care of yourselves. Sorry, I was reading that. That's no fun. Where are all the people provers? Polly, you beautiful bastard. Have a great night, folks. Stay doomed.